All right, I'm back. I DVR'd the Jets Eagles game. Watched that yesterday, and I know a win is a win and all that. And there's a lot of positives that we can take from this game, which I'll get to in a second. But that second half, that second half was every bit as bad, if not worse, than any half of football we saw in that Dallas Cowboys game in week number two. I can't stress enough how much I want to see a complete game of football. Yes, they won the game. Terrific. Fantastic. They're not going to match the Lions 0-16. Hooray. But... If you're just going to sit back and wave pom-poms and not address the glaring, glaring, glaring flaws of this team, oh my god. I'm getting tired of these drop passes. I'm getting tired of wide receivers not either getting open or not getting targeted when they're open. I'm getting tired of the offensive line sucking ass. Let's, let's focus on some of the good here. All right. The defense. Now, a lot of people may be saying, well, you know, the defense kind of, you know, started letting the Jets score points. They let them score quickly. Well, not quickly, but they let them squeak in a touchdown right before, the, right before halftime hit and then score 10 more points in the final two quarters. You know, they started letting the Jets come back in and the Jets almost stole this game away. The one thing... The one thing that the defense did that impressed me is every single scoring drive that the Jets got points out of, they had to earn. It was struggling, clock-eating type drive shit. Even in the end of the game where you saw that touchdown, the field goal, where both drives took five plus six, seven, eight minutes off the clock. Now... When you get when you get a 24 nothing lead in a game, the other team's offense has to score quick. Has to has to have some sort of big quick turnaround. Either it's like, you know, a kickoff with like what Sproles did on a punt return, a big play from the offense, the quarterback, running back, whatever. But the defense kept that shit on lockdown and made the Jets earn everything by eating up a lot of clock. And frankly, when you're down 24 nothing, and if you can't get that big, fast scoring drive, it is near impossible to come back and win an NFL game. So the defense did their part. And my God, Jordan Hicks. Wow, are you a blessing in disguise so far. Guy was all over the field. Got his chance because Michael Kendricks is out hurt. Uh, need someone to step up. Need someone to step up, especially at linebacker right now. Jordan Hicks took the ball by the reins and ran all around the field with it, whatever sense that makes. Tackles, forced fumble. Just... Watch, well, a recovered fumble. When Brandon Marshall decided to <laughs> pitch the ball at Connor Barwin's face, which, by the way, was about the dumbest fucking play of the year so far. Anyways, um, but enough Jeff Bashan. Uh, <coughs> Jordan Hicks sprawls. Sprawls, my boy, my favorite player on this team ever since Shady left. <laughs> that punt return is the reason why you're not seeing Kenyon Barner take punt returns right now. Because a lot of people here, specifically in Philadelphia, based on what they saw Kenyon Barner do in preseason, where he took a couple to the house, and you saw Sproles not, not field him punts during preseason, said, like, oh, man, no, this guy should be given a shot, man. See, he might be even better than Sproles. Get the fuck out of here. Kenyon Barner would have not would not have got a touchdown out of that punt return that Sproles. That was sick. That was sick. I was, I was surprised that the, the entire stadium didn't evacuate due to illness caused by that return. That's how fucking nasty it was. Anyways, Sproles is the shit that goes without saying. He always has been. 
Now, Ryan Matthews. Excellent job running the ball. Got over 100 yards. It's like all of a sudden it's like, oh wow, you know, hey. Got a highlight here. The Eagles actually ran the ball well against a good defense. Props to that. This motherfucker took points off the board for the Eagles when he has a little loop route right on the sideline, turning around. Sam Bradford sees him. No one's covering him. The nearest guy covering him is a linebacker at midfield that has to turn his field of position around so bad that he trips over his own feet. He's stumbling. No one's going to get there in time. Ball's coming in. Ryan Matthews is like, that was about as easy of a touchdown. This was that, that was right up there with that Riley Cooper drop pass in the in the divisional round in the wild card round in Philadelphia against the Saints two seasons ago. Like it was right up there with that. Like that was so fucking awful, and that shit has got to stop. And a lot of people want to say, like, you know, oh, oh it's, it's all the Jets' fuck-ups that cost the game. You know, the, the Eagles didn't beat the Jets. The Jets beat themselves. Oh, please. This game would have been an easy blowout for the Eagles if, one, if Ryan Matthews catches that pass, that little short pass from Sam Bradford that was thrown perfect on target, hit him in the hands and chest, and he doesn't catch it in. And, two, there was a missed interception. Um, I forget who it was. I think it was Thurman and Jenkins. Or collide, beat their uh, beat the coverage, jump the route, are sitting there. Fitzpatrick throws up a plum for them to pick right off the tree, and they run into each other. That was a drive that the Jets got points up, and that Matthews pass that was dropped should have been a drive that the Eagles got a touchdown off of. So don't give me all that shit of oh the Jets just beat themselves. Please, the Eagles took a lot of points off the boards for themselves too. This game could have easily been a blowout if you want to look at things a different way, but. I wish I could come out of this game much more positive. And I'll tell you what, another thing. I'm glad that we finally started taking snaps out of the center. And this was easy to monitor when I'm watching this on DVR because you watch the game basically condensed into a one-hour version. And I kept track of how many times Chip Kelly had Sam Bradford take the hike under center. Not in shotgun, not in anything else. Take the hike under center. It was 50 15 times, 15 times, of all 15 times, the number of bootlegs, zero. The number of play action, zero. The number of anything else other than handing the ball directly off to the running back was zero times. Every single, other than handing off, I may have said that wrong. Every single snap that was under center was handed off to the running back. For someone in Chip Kelly who claims to be a super-duper offensive guru genius motherfucker, you cannot be that transparent in the NFL and expect to get anywhere. Every single snap under center was a handoff to the running back. Every single time. Not one play action, not one bootleg, not no one, nothing of anything else. And I'm like, where is all this creativity and guru genius offensive shit at? Because I don't see it. And I need to start seeing it. Now is the time to start doing it. Anyways, that's all I got to say about that, and it's looking like the game this week may be canceled, so I'm back in town, there might not even be football, there's a hurricane that's supposedly going to, you know, come 500 miles within America, so they're going to shut down everything. But anyways, they are seriously talking about canceling the Redskins-Eagles game in Landover, Maryland this week. But anyways... Let's go over the week three recap and go into the week four predictions. I'm going to blast through these because a lot of these games I didn't see any of the highlights on. I don't have time to catch up and watch you know, NFL Network because I've been out of town for the past few days. So um, I wasn't even watching football on Sunday. Anyways, 
Uh, Giants beat the Redskins. <laughs> this game is only a somewhat respectable score because there's a punt return taken to the house late in the game. 32-21. whoop dee dee doo 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 Philadelphia beat the New York Jets 24-17. We already went over that. Uh, Cincinnati over Baltimore. My God, Baltimore is 0-3. That's just fucking terrible. And I'll tell you what. Cincinnati has every opportunity in the world right now to do some damage because their division is now the shits, especially with Big Ben on the sideline for six, seven, eight weeks, however much it's supposed to be. Cincinnati can do enough damage where they get enough wins under their belt that they can be looking at a bye in the playoffs. It's time to nut, uh, nut up or shut up with this team because this team is getting such a golden opportunity to grab, grab hold of the promised land and not let it slip away like they do every fucking year in the playoffs. Anyways, it's on you, Cincinnati. Get it done. Um, New Orleans barely losing to Carolina with Drew Brees on the bench. That's I was expecting Carolina to whoop that ass a bit better than 27-22, to but I digress. They won the game. That's all that matters. Um, Cleveland <laughs> losing to Oakland 27-20. to Oakland trying to fuck up what could be a good draft pick, and they're going to end up winning three, four, maybe five games and really screw things up. <laughs> Jerks. Um, Atlanta whooping that Dallas ass by 11 in a game that Dallas had full control of in that first half. You know... Us Eagles fans caught a lot of shit from those Dallas fans saying how bad Matty Ice and Julio Jones busted us up. The fuck did you guys do to stop him? Now, I know you're going to be like, oh man, we wouldn't want if we had Dez and we had Romo and all that shit. Now shut the fuck up, because all you guys were popping off like you were something special, even with this makeshift squad. I saw a number of you Dallas fans talking smack, like you're going to go in and own this team. Get the fuck out of here. They came into your turf and whooped your ass. At least we lost more respectably on their turf. But it's a loss is a loss is a loss. So, I mean, you know what? Let's not pick and prune here. But the bottom line is Julio Jones bent you over the jailhouse sink and gagged you while he fucked you in the ass. How do you like them apples? But anyways, let's move on to the next game here. Tampa losing to Houston. Ugh. Ugh. Just a battle of the uglies. 19-9. Minnesota. That team that I predicted to go into the playoffs is playing like a playoff team other than week one, but that was... Don't even pay attention to that. 31-14 uh, over San Diego. New England barely, barely squeaking by the Jacksonville Jaguars by a score of 51-17. to Boy, that Tom Brady sure looks terrible. Oh, man, if only he had defeated footballs to play with. That must have been the obvious reason why he, he won football games before this season. Anyways, um, <laughs> Pittsburgh, huge game in that Ben Roethlisberger got hurt, and now Michael Vick <laughs> is going to be your starting quarterback. Have fun with that, Pittsburgh. Oh, have fun with that. Have fun with a with a in, incomplete passing machine extraordinaire named Mr. Michael Vick. Um, but they beat the St. Louis Rams 12-6 to in the, wow, what an entertaining game. Hashtag sarcasm matchup of the week. Indianapolis, they are not, not, just like last year, not going 0-3. They started out 0-2 last year, and they are just they were just fine. I think this is the same thing next year. In fact, they're going to bounce back with another win this week, and you'll see who they're facing here in a second. But anyways, Indianapolis came back and uh, stormed back in this game. Um, uh, it's a pretty big deficit at first. I figure what exactly it was. But anyways... 35-33, San Francisco, <laughs> they scored, <laughs> they scored a touchdown, that's an accomplishment, right, too bad the other team scored like seven touchdowns, but anyways, um, it was actually six touchdowns, but who's counting, Arizona 47, San Francisco 7, uh, Buffalo thumped that Miami Dolphin ass, and that Miami Dolphin ass is pretty swollen right now. 
And for a team that a lot of people thought was going to be an, in an ounce of contention of, like, you know, threatening to beat good teams in this league, sure aren't looking like it. I mean, enjoy that barely win over the Washington Redskins as long as you can in week one. I am except might be your only highlight for some time. Um, Chicago. They, they played. Eh, not well, but they played. And they went to Seattle. Lost 26 to nothing. <laughs> All right, Peyton Manning. He's proved me wrong again. Oh, and by the way, to Patriots fans, I picked the Patriots to win last week and they won. Huh? Huh? Anyways, Denver, 24 to 12 over the Lions. Lions. Uh, Peyton Manning looks solid, at least by his slide and watch the game, but his uh, stat line looked really good. The Kansas City Chiefs, Jeremy Macklin, he scored a touchdown, and he's a wide receiver. Chiefs scored a wide receiver touchdown. How about that? Too bad Aaron Rodgers put up five touchdowns just on his own self. 38-28. to 28. Enjoy Andy Reid in Kansas City. Oh, by all means, enjoy him. And Aaron Rodgers... I, I can't believe I was sweating the fact that they lost Jordy Nelson this year. I, it, just, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't... They could, he could be throwing the guys in wheelchairs and he'd still get five touchdowns in this game on Sunday night or Monday night. Oh, my God. Anyways... Let's just go and blast through our predictions here. Thursday Night Football, Baltimore at Pittsburgh. Baltimore is now the road favorite. Ha! <laughs> That's how much respect Michael Vick gets nowadays. That's funny. Um, is it possible Baltimore starts out 0-4? Uh, can Joe Flacco lose four games, in, four games in a row? Joey Flack, four games in a row? No, it's just going to be three. They're going to win. Baltimore wins, but beating Michael Vick at this age in his career, who cares? Uh, Philadelphia at Washington. I might not even end up making a prediction video for this later this week because the game might get canceled by Saturday. New York Jets at Miami. Pfft, who cares? This is this is this is my who gives a shit game of the week because Miami was a team I was actually interested to see what they could do, and so far they've done abysmally nothing. And the Jets, pfft, who cares? I don't know. Uh, here's hoping that Brandon Marshall throws another ball off of someone else's helmet and tops the spectacle that he made last week. Houston at Atlanta. Atlanta is going to whoop that ass. Houston is just, they're looking, I mean, I know they, they won big last week against the, the half a team, but anyways, um, look for Atlanta to win big at home. And Atlanta, are they the real deal? Are they, the, like, everyone's, like, kind of, like, forgetting about them. Like, everyone's just saying, like, oh, you know, it's, it's 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 the it's the Patriots and it's the Packers and there's everyone else but Atlanta's like, what about us? We got Matty Ice, we got Julio Jones. I don't know why I pointed myself as Matty Ice. What the fuck? Ew, 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 ew. At least he's a South Jersey guy, so I can respect that. But anyways, um, yeah. So Atlanta's like, you know, hey, we're like kicking people's asses over here. What you know, like hello. Anyways. Um, look for Atlanta to win. New York Giants at Buffalo. Look for Buffalo to stomp that giant ass at home. Oakland at Chicago. Wow! Will this game suck? Oh my god! Wow! This is terrible! Oh my god! This is, this is like one of the worst NFL matchups I've seen in such a long time. Like, my god! My god, are they even going to air this in Chicago? Like, I'd rather watch another game. I'd rather watch, I don't know, what, what else is it? Cleveland at San Diego. I'd rather watch, I, is there a CFL game? Is there a WNBA game? I'm, let's not go overboard. But anyways, um, Chicago. Just kidding, Oakland's going to win and they're going to fuck up the draft pick even more. Oakland winning on the road. Kansas City at Cincinnati. Andy Reid is going to ruin this Chiefs franchise. Ha ha, I don't care. It's funny to see it happen to some other team. Since he's winning at home. Jacksonville at Indianapolis. 
just like that, Colts are back up to 2-2. Two and two. They're winning that game. Carolina at Tampa Bay. Carolina is going to go into Tampa and whoop that Buccaneer ass. Cleveland at San Diego. San Diego is going to win. San Diego is going to win. I think San Diego is going to win in blowout fashion in this game. I don't like Fuck Cleveland. St. Louis at Arizona. I'm going to try something different here because, you know, I don't give much confidence into the into the Cardinals because it's like, it's like you know, I, I want to see them do something that impresses the shit out of me. So I'm going to predict Arizona to win by at least 28 points in this game. At least 28 points. Okay, they're playing at home. They're playing against a team that has played like absolute shit the past two weeks in the Rams. Arizona's going to win by 28 points. Now, I'm only doing this to prove a point that the Rams are going to end up winning by at least 14 points. But I'm picking Arizona to win by 28. See, because the ounce I have, the ounce I have a, a overwhelming ounce of confidence in this team, they're going to shit the bed. Just, just by arch fiend logic. I'm sorry, Arizona, if they shit the bed and my logic proved to be true. Minnesota at Denver. I hate to say it, but Peyton Manning's been playing a lot better the past two weeks. I, I like Minnesota and their squad right now, but I see Denver winning, especially at home. Oh, Green Bay at San Francisco. I mean, I'm going to say Green Bay is up by at least 24 by halftime. At least 24 points by halftime. And if it's not, if even if they're only up by like 21 or 22 points, it should be considered an upset. Like it should be like they should cheer. They should go into halftime in San Francisco's locker room and spray champagne all over each other because it will take a miracle to go into halftime with how atrocious this San Francisco squad is right now and not be down by at least 24 points at halftime. Dallas at New Orleans for Sunday night football. I have to admit that Brandon Whedon isn't playing all that bad. Now, the bottom line here is, and this is a tough game to predict because it's still not announced whether or not Drew Brees is going to be playing. I think if Drew Brees plays, New Orleans wins this game. But you know what? I think New Orleans wins this game no matter what. I just... And again, I know Dallas is in a tough spot with all the players they're missing. And frankly, if they hit all their players back, I'd have Dallas in this game. Uh, if, it was, if it was just Des and Romo back in this game, oh, I'd have Dallas all day in this game. No, no doubt about it. But that makeshift squad, you saw them break last week. You saw them break. They couldn't stop the run when they had to stop the run. That defense got worked. That defense can't shut down good wide receivers, good quarterbacks like Matty Ice. And that's what you got. You had a team that completely folded after a huge lead. Romo and Dez would never let a lead dissolve like that in Dallas. But... You don't got Romo and Des right now. Anyways, ah, finishing off with Monday Night Football, Detroit at Seattle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's all these offers ended up getting primetime games. Oh, my God. Um, look for Seattle to win by 52 points. The buys this week, New England and Tennessee, and potentially Washington and Philadelphia. If that game gets canceled... The game is going to be held week eight because both Washington and Philadelphia have a bye week eight, so they would wipe out the game now, move it over to week eight. The other possibility that they're talking about right now is holding the game in Pittsburgh, neutral territory for both teams. So that'd be interesting, kind of like what they did last year where they had um, uh, the Jets and Bills play over in Detroit because there's, you know, 10,000 feet of snow falling in Buffalo, which happens every year. But anyways, um, interesting stuff, interesting matchups. A lot of things are going to really start coming to form. Really, really start coming to form. I want to see how Cincinnati plays. Because like, there's, 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 there's those teams where, you know, you want to figure out... Because, you know, I, I, I want to know that it's more than just the Packers and Patriots. I, I want to see other teams step up and start dominating. I want to see 
Some teams, like the Falcons, start dominating. You know, just, just other teams step up and say, hey, you know, we're here. We're staking our claim. Cincinnati, are you going to step up and start dominating? Is anyone else going to join the Packers and the Patriots at the table? Because right now they're eating all the cheese and Boston baked beans that each other brought to the table. That was stupid. Anyway, that's our predictions for this week. I'll be out with the Eagles prediction Saturday if the game takes place. We'll know by then if it's going to get canceled. Until then, let's enjoy our football. I'm back. I'll be back here live tweeting this Sunday. Link for my Twitter is in the video description. Go Eagles. We won a game. Yippity-dee-da-doo-da-day. Fuck the Dallas Cowboys. Have a good day, everyone.